You've done it before and you can do it now. See the positive possibilities. Redirect the substantial energy of your frustration and turn it into positive, effective and unstoppable determination. Ralph Marston. And again, the cliche, if only you believe you can achieve, had a big play in Hannah Babalola's life, otherwise known as the unstoppable. My name is Anna Babalola. I'm from Cookie State. I'm from a family of seven. I'm the third child of my family. Um, when, at the age of seven, I lost the use of my leg. And that was what makes me to be in the wheelchair. A gold medalist of the prestigious All-African Games and current holder of the best wheelchair athlete in the country, Hannah has beaten the odds, set herself on a high pedestal, and created a name for herself. The old and the young babes twitch at the mention of her name and her panegyrics are sang in the mouths of all. The Unstoppable. How has she transited from an ordinary physically challenged person to a world-class athlete? Six months after her coming to Lagos, she went for several races and trials and was eventually enlisted in the national team. Luck shone on her part when the call-up was made for the best four after the trial. It was almost impracticable to give a four-slot entry into the national team after a trial. My name is Coach Babapende Kolawole, wheelchair coach of Team Nigeria. After some time, I, I got to, I, I, I was introduced to sports. Someone introduced me to come to National Stadium in Ibadan to come and see what was going on. And that day, I went to the National Stadium in Ibadan. I saw a lot of athletes. When we came to Ibadan, a lot of people gave me, so I just saw I'm about our work past then and I said, this guy will be good in, in athletics. It's really we here. But the story did not materialize t until 2010. When I, when I had my disability, I felt I was the only one living with disability. I felt it's just over. I don't know that there can be a, an avenue for you to participate in sport, live your life, enjoy your life. So when I got to National Stadium in Nevada, I saw a lot of athletes training very, very, very hard. They are so beautiful. They're not thinking of their disability. They're not thinking of their, their, their impairment, they are so happy. And I sat down and I was like, I think I want to join this. I want to belong to this association. That is how I got started. So when I started, the event I really love to do, do, they don't have it in Ibadan. They had power lifting, but Ibadan was like, National Student Ibadan was like, they are like a national camp. So they have, it comprises of all the games. I saw a lot of games, but the one I love so much was Wheelchair race. Late 2010 December, when she come and she wanted to start. But then we are about to round up the show. And then I'm not the head coach, I'm an assistant coach to my coach, Black Moses. So we, 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 we resume back in January 2011, then she resume with us. When I started wheelchair racing, I was very, 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 my mind was just to represent Nigeria, to wear green, white, green. Owing to her relentlessness and efforts, she stood above the rest in the national camp. It was a difficult thing. Her joy sprouted up when she had her first athlete track. Her goal to represent Nigeria was reached, a milestone worthwhile. The great joy birthed a new level of sacrifice, ignited the fire of passion, and formed a new lens of focus. It was all about representing. Because the, when, when I was on the long run, when I was in, when I was doing powerlifting, when I was lifting, there's a coach of mine that used to say, if you are competing as an athlete and you have not put on green, white, green, you have not put on green, white, green, that you are not an athlete, you are just like an, an am, amateur. Then I was like, oh, I do want to be an amateur. I really want to do this sport. I want to get to the top of my career. I want to wear green, white, green. Within one year, she became national champion in that 2011. And by 2011, all Africa game in Maputo, she made the team. She made the, that team as the, 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 the last athlete to qualify to be in camp. But before we leave the camp, she became number one. My joy doesn't come that day. 
I entered, I was, I was in a national camp. Because you know when you make national team, it's not easy to make national team. It's not easy. But there's somebody that is very, very strong that have been in that position. You have to defeat that person to be, to be in a national team. It's not easy. So it was like a very big goal for me, something to achieve. And when I, when I got to national camp, I was not really even happy. I mean, I was not happy at all until we're departing to the to the Maputo, 2011. They now gave me my tracksuit. Then I was like, so for real, I'll be wearing green, white, green. I'll be representing my country, Nigeria. I went into my room. I took my tracksuit. I sat down on the bed. I was just bouncing up, bouncing up, like green, white, green, Nigeria. I was so excited. Then she had been a wonderful athlete. Let me put that way. She's one of the wonderful athletes. Uh, but, but an athlete to come to the limelight less than five, six years and find himself in the Paralympic. So that was how the passion and love I have for, for sport. Um, then I was ready to do anything, even if you are not giving me nothing. I'm ready to go train morning and afternoon. Don't give me anything. So far I'm going to put on green white green. <laughs> I don't care. That was how I, I went for the games in All African Games. At the All African Games, which was her first international competition, Hannah didn't win any medal, but however, turned out to be the best in Africa and in Nigeria after the tournament. Ever since she became the unstoppable, from 2011 till date, she's undefeated in Nigeria and Africa and the world number six. I didn't win because of my first exposure. I got to the final, I raced, and after that tournament, I became the best athlete in Africa. Then the best in Nigeria, the best in Africa. That was how I was unstoppable. Since 2011, up to date, 2017, I, no, nobody can defeat me in Nigeria, nobody can defeat me in Africa. I'm the number six in the world. I was in the Paralympics last year. I was a finalist. So, and I'm still training very, very hard. I don't want to be the finalist in any Paralympics again because last Paralympics I was a finalist. So right now my aim and ambition is to be a medalist in any of the next Paralympics of the going. It has not been easy traveling up and down, going. I remember when I traveled to the United States one time like that, I had a lot of series of experience because after I was the best in Nigeria, I was the best in Africa, I, I became, I want to do more. I want to qualify for the Paralympics. When I wanted to qualify for the Paralympics, it was not really hard for me. It was not really easy for me. When I wanted to qualify for the Paralympics, it was very, very difficult. There was an academy in University of Illinois. I wanted to see what they are doing. How these people actually train. How are they, how they become the best athlete in the world. But I don't have the money. I don't have the, I don't have anything. When I got my visa to go to the United States of America, I had a training camp I was supposed to go. To go be the glory, I had a little people coming in to, to sponsor me, to pay for my ticket too to Atlanta. The training camp, I supposed to pay $900 for the training camp, but fortunately enough for me, the coach gave me a privilege that I'm not going to pay. Because he asked me, he said, what do you need? Do you need a coach or you need a training camp? I told him, I said, I need boats. I need a coach and I need a training camp opportunity. And he said, okay, if it's, that is what you want. I'm going to give you my training camp for free. You can come. When I got to Atlanta, Georgia, I saw Canadian athletes athletes from different, different countries. I was so excited. I learned a lot of things from them. And I was like, which way to go? And then I, 
after the training camp, I was about coming back to Nigeria. I called my parents and I said, where I'm supposed to stay in the United States of America. The accommodation was not there for me no more. And I called my parents and I said, I'm coming back home. My parents said, no, 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 what are you coming back home to do? No, you have to be in the United States. No, come, don't come back home. No, 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 no. And I was like, ah, no, I'm coming back home. I'm not comfortable. I don't even have way to stay. An unstoppable aims high and never settles for less. Qualifying for the Paralympics was way difficult for Hannah. Things weren't so rosy and the need to learn from the best was essential at the time. Hannah left the United States for Nigeria shortly after her training. After a moment, she decided it was time she picked up the championship belt and put Nigeria at the fore. She traveled back to the United States and espoused two to three races in Arizona. I had to go back to the United States of America. When I went there, I went to Arizona. Then I was able to register for three or two races in the United States. Two or three races in the United States. So when I got to Arizona, the coach wanted to convert me to tennis. When he saw my physique, he said I was very, very good at tennis. Although I play a little bit of tennis, but I play tennis for fun. But the, really, the game I really have passion for is Richard Wilson. Then when I got to, when I got to Arizona, the man said he can get me a scholarship to one of the universities or college in Arizona, but I have to race. I have to play tennis. But for me, I, I want to, I want to race. After I practice with a man for a little bit, I have to travel to Chicago. In Chicago, she was greeted with great difficulty and found herself in a miasma. When I got to Chicago, I was not really in the University of Illinois. I could not get to the University of Illinois. Illinois, they have an academy. So when I got there, there was no place for me to stay. I was not even, I was short of cash. I don't have any money with me. I was on the street, going from one, one McDonald's, one eatery or the other. I was just roaming about the streets. And you know, it's not really called for, for you to leave your country and go to a country you don't have where to stay. You don't have what, you don't even know what to do. But fortunately enough for me, before I left, I registered myself for some races. So I was to go to, I was to go to Utica to do 15 kilometers. The, the race is called Bolly Makers, to race that 15 kilometers. I don't even have money to lodge in an hotel. Life hit so hard on her, but she pressed on. Giving up wasn't an option. And in the words of Thomas Carlyle, nothing stops the man who desires to achieve. Every obstacle is simply a course to develop his achievement muscle. So what happened? What, what did I do? What happened? After some few days, I had to go and ask questions. question that, please, I'm looking for a cheap reservation. Where can I get a cheap reservation? They now recommended me that if, we, if I go to University of Roosevelt, that there's a hostel there. It's very, very cheap. I can see for $44. That's how I went there. I got a reservation for one night, $44. I, I spent just only one night, I slept like I was dead because I've been on the streets for a long time. I slept off, then the, the next day, I was back on the streets, just roaming about, running about. Then it was about a few days to my race in Utica. I now took off to Utica. When I got to Utica, I raced to go be the glory. I played second. I had prize money. When they paid me my check, I just... That was just give me like a little bit motivation because I was financially down. And I went to New Jersey. From there, I was able to secure an accommodation. From there, I started training. From there, I started racing around the United States. That is how I, I was able to qualify for the Paralympics. Sponsor myself for some races. The money, my prize money I won, I was able to send myself to Switzerland to go and qualify. That was how I qualified for the Paralympics last year. It's a strengthening of his powers of accomplishment. In my life, I've met a lot of people. I've met people that motivated me. I've met people that looked down on me. I've met people that appreciate me. When I was a little younger, at the point in time that my parents could not, could not even help me again, I met a woman. My name is Udeme Wisdom. I'm from Akwaibom State, Ikotek Bene in Akwaibom State to be precise. I met this woman. I met her in the church. She's not even from my tribe. She's, she's not from where I come from. She, she, she asked a lot of questions about me. I told her, she came to my house. 
then since then this young lady never let go of me. Then she adopted me as her own sister. For about 12 years now, 12, 2014, up to date, I've been living with her. And this woman, she's my mom, she's my sister, she's my, she's everything to me in the world. Um, I'm married, I have three children. Um, we all live here to the glory of God. And um, I work as a caterer. I run a private business, so I do my own stuff as um, a caterer. My business name is Shop to Pot Catering Services. There was a, there was a year, she, she followed me to a tournament to, to watch me as I race. And she's part of my family. Even though we are not related by blood, but, it let me understand that apart from being related by blood, we can be related by love. Me and this woman were related by love. She didn't want to give, she didn't want to let go of my dreams. She just see me and said, okay, instead of me to be alone in the house and I will not have good, I will not be catered for. Yes, Hannah is someone that is very determined. That's one quality about her. And I know that anytime, you know, we're speaking about her, especially with my husband. My husband has her qualities, so they love each other very much. And, um, you know, so he's always like, this lady is very determined. Despite her physical challenge, yet she's someone that is very passionate about something that she's doing, anything that she's doing at all. Determination is her key word. That's it. That's what I see in her. She, she corrects me with love. She's just everything about her. She's everything. I cannot talk my, I cannot say my story without saying, talking about this woman. And this woman, she's very lovely. She's ghost fearing. Then I felt like if every, if every individual, or even two or three or four people in Nigeria, can have a good heart, can have inspirited spirit, heart like this woman, pick somebody up, assist her, just trying to see how one way or the other. She can, came, she, come, she can come in. She came in into my life and, and impacted my life. Sometimes I even draw inspiration from her. I see her as someone that, ah, if this lady can go ahead and then achieve this, how much more every other person? So she's someone that has really transformed. When I met her, she wasn't like this, you know, she was someone who had, you know, been coming, you know, facing her own challenges, her own way. But after some time, not just with my own encouragement, but also the encouragement from others, but she has come all the way. And of course, I won't um, rule out the God factor. God has been there. God is always there for every one of us. Me, I didn't so, be in this woman, I didn't come into my life. I, I might be, end up my life in the streets. I may not even be able to do the sport I was able to do. She encouraged me with a lot of businesses. She, there was a time I was into phone call business, perspective business to, break, to survive myself. This woman opened, opened, opened a phone call business for me with her own money because she worked in the empty office. This woman is a very, very lovely woman. There was a time I needed braces on my leg. She was ready. She bought the braces for me to be able to walk. Where we were living previously at our previous residence, so she would say um, she can't walk to the bus stop and then you know, she would walk, maybe sit down a little while. And then she told me that she needed a caliper. So that thing, she would clip it to her legs and then be able to walk a little bit further and all that. But you know what? Ever since she went into sports, what has happened is that she, she, kept, she keeps telling me that, you know, with sports, she has become stronger. So those distances she couldn't cover, just moving by herself, she has been able to cover it. So she's much stronger, both physically and even emotionally. Hannah has been a blessing to me. The first international trip that I made, it was Hannah that made it possible. When I, I was growing up, I made it in my mind that even if, even if I cannot achieve anything in this life, 
the only thing I want to achieve in my life is to make this woman happy. If I want to do something, I want to do something very, very bad. I will start thinking about her. I don't want to hurt her. I want her to be happy. I want her to see what she did to me as a source of her joy. I remember, you know, when we were much younger, now this is about maybe like seven, eight years ago when we were at our former residence. You know, then I was still doing my corporate job and she was the one who was on ground to help me. So she would always tell me, you know, she cleans, cooks, does laundry, does everything practically. So then when I needed that physical help, she was the one that was there. Helping these children with homework, she's very intelligent. So she helps them with their homework. She does a lot of things. And, you know, they've come to, at least she was there before any of these children were born because I actually knew her before I got married. It was a time when I was helping Hannah. But do you know what? Today, Hannah is now the one that is supporting me. So she has been the one that, and I see her as um, someone that um, has become a part of my life. Hannah has proven to the world that with the right mental attitude and determination, plus a passion for the art, one definitely can be unstoppable. Unstoppability isn't a facade, but a reality that can be reached and well lived. I am resilient, therefore I am unstoppable. It's important to always remember who you are, no matter what challenges you may have to face. Always stay true to yourself and never give up. Never.